Thanks again for staying with us on the program this morning on ITV. We call it TMI Monday with you sincerely. Okay, now I told you a while ago that we have uh, a very interesting personality in the studio. is a professor of English, Professor Tien Lion. Of course, uh, he's going to be sharing some uh, thoughts and perspectives on uh, why the uh, removed deputy governor elect of Barrister State had so many names. You recall that uh, around on the 12th, 13th, 14th of February, the Supreme Court sacked Barrister State governor elect and his deputy, DG Remiro. And uh, one of the grounds uh, that was uh, given for that decision, uh, let me just take you through the story that we have here. Uh, it says, uh, okay, it was the PDP that alleged in its case that. Uh, Mr. Deji Eremio's name was written as Deji Biobara in his primary school certificate. All right, I I'm sure we can project this on the screen so you can see it, so you can see exactly what we're talking about. Uh, his name written as Deji Biobara in his primary school certificate. Then the document from his secondary school education bore a Deji Biobara Kumo as his name while that of his university education had D.G. Biobarakuma as his name. Also, the result from his MBA certificate had D.G. Biobarakuma Wangana, uh, Wangaha as the name of the same person. And the appeal called in Abuja had dismissed the PDP's case and affirmed the candidacy of the deputy governor elected in the November 16, 2019 governorship election. But the matter didn't end there. Uh, the judgment by the appeal called set aside the November 12th verdict of Justice Inya, a court of the Federal High Court in Abuja, disqualifying DG Eremio as the APC's deputy governorship candidate in the poll. But uh, we eventually got to the Supreme Court, which of course upheld the earlier decision disqualifying DG Eremio. So how possible for one man to have uh, over five names? That's the thrust of the discussion. And uh, Professor Diri, uh, Tele Ayo is from the uh, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, University of Benin, and is a professor of English. So, Prof, tell us first, you are an enjoyer, I suppose. Yes, I am. Okay, so how possible, how possible is it for us to have this kind of situation? Yeah. Yes, um, what happened is quite unfortunate, and um, the APC deputy governorship candidate, or rather, governorship, uh, deputy governor elect. Yes fell into a trap, I believe largely out of ignorance mm. about uh, the circumstances that uh, brought about the, the multiplicity of names. Okay. And um, as somebody from his community, if you know those circumstances, you cannot uh, sympathize with him. Uh, if he had known the full implications, just as the Supreme Court had mentioned, maybe right from the outset he would have approached those educational institutions okay. themselves to reissue the certificates okay. using the very authentic, uh, the no. correct versions of the names. Yes. So if we take them one by one, yes. for instance, we are told that uh, in the primary school certificate, mm. the first name is written as mm. Biobara. Biobara. Yes. Okay. While in the secondary school certificate, it is written as Biobara Kumo. Yes. yes. Then in another one, the Greek certificate is written as Biobara Kuma. Yes. Now, the, the, the <laughs> difference is in the ending of the name. Okay. One is Ra, the other one is Mo, mm -hmm. the other one is Ma. Mm -hmm. And in his uh, affidavit, he friend that the one ending in Ma is yes. the accurate one. Okay. And indeed, uh, it's understandable if you are from that particular environment, mm. why it happened that way. Mm. The, first of all, the difference between Biobara and Biobara Kumo, both of them means... The same thing? Did not forget. Okay. In fact, Biobara Kumo, long as it is, mm. is most likely to be a shorter version of a longer name. Okay. Aiba Ewo Biobara Hmm. Meaning God does not forget me. Okay. Okay. Or God does not forget. Okay. Whether okay, God does not forget is Biobara. God does Biobara Kuma means God should not forget me. Hmm. Biobara Kuma also means God should not forget me. Okay. Should not forget me. It's okay. a short form. It's a short form. Now Biobara appears to be the declarative God does not forget. Hmm. Biobara Kuma or Biobara Kuma means it's like imperative, a command. A request saying God should not, not forget, forget me. me. 
So Biobarak Ra is, as I have said, is declarative. God does not forget. Okay. Or does not forget. Biobarakuma, Biobarakuma means God, may God not forget. Yeah. So the difference between Biobarakuma and Biobarakuma is dialectal. Okay. Uh, many people believe that uh, Bielsa state is a homogeneous state. Yeah. But it is not as simple as many people think. Oh, really? It is not. For instance, there is the Nilde version of Ejo. Mm. There, then there is the Ezon. We make a distinction between Ejo mm -hmm. and Ezon. Mm -hmm. Ejo refers to the umbrella linguistic cluster okay. that comprises even the Ebane, that is Boni, Calabari, or Kreka in River State, yeah. together with the Nimbe and the Ezon speaking people, okay. which would range from the central Bayelsa down to. Delta, Edo, and even Undo. Okay. Those dialects are more mutually intelligible. So in those dialects, it will be rendered as Biobarakumo, that is ending in O. Mm. In the Nende dialect where Degi Remeyu is from, it yeah. will be rendered as A, Biobarakumo. Mm. So whatever circumstance led to it being written ending in O yes. in the in in the um, in the Waek, in the uh, well, Waek re results, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I do not, well, I'm not a mouthpiece of uh, hmm. Degi Rimeu himself. Yes. So, that I understand that Biobarakuma is the Ezon version. Biobarakuma is the Nimbe version. That, that, that was the one he, he says was the authentic one. Yes, Biobarakuma Biobara is yes. authentic because that is okay. the Nimbe version of okay. the Nimbe. And he's from Nimbe. He's from Nimbe. Okay, now, now there, there's something I need to get clear, which yes. is, um, you said, this is, this, this is seemingly peculiar to the... Uh, to the job people, I don't know, or Bayasa people. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, it's so, really peculiar. Even okay. if you look at some names, yes. in, for instance, in Edo State, where yes. we are. No, but, but, but let's look at what, 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 what predisposes people in that area to having this kind of problem. Because there's, there's an obituary yeah. poster you're supposed to bring yes. for us to illustrate. So what, what makes this, what makes this well, well, I'm, possible? I will gradually come even to the inclusion of the Remian, which was not in the previous... Yes, statistics. yes. Yes, which yes. we tend out to INEC. Yes. Now, essentially, sometimes, for instance, there is also the question of the Sunni being written once as Degi and in another one as Adegi. Mm. The explanation I learned is essentially that his uncle was from the Ogbia speaking area. Ogbea speaking area is Good Lord Jonathan's area. It was the same as Nimbe in one local government area okay. before they were separated. Okay. But Ogbea is a different language. Entirely. Yeah, yeah, and entirely, it is not even an enjoyed language. From <laughs> Nimbe, Nimbe is different. Ezon is fairly different. But Nimbe and Ezon are their dialects of the same language. Okay. Ogbea is different. If an Ogbea man wants to call your name Sonny, it's most likely the person will call it a Sonny. That R element <laughs> always comes in. Linguistic carrier. Exactly. Was... So it's a phonological feature of mm. Ogbea mm. as it were. Mm. So that if somebody wants to mention Bini, the person will say Abini, mm. Abini. Mm. And what I learned was that his uncle was uh, was in Ogbea. And, and he still with him. had to register him oh. in his absence for WASC. Hmm. And in the process of registering him for WASC, the person now put that Ogbea element of into, a, into the name into the name adegi so adegi mm. when it is g instead of g, g okay yes. adegi okay adegi. Yes. so that kind of thing happened having seen that that name was wrongly entered of course that is a problem with many candidates who will tell somebody in the city to register waek for me mm. register my name for jam and yeah. the person might make a mistake yeah. So yeah. that is the kind of trap you also yeah. fell into that is what i understand now, in the previous certificates, Wanga, the middle name was not there. Yes, I, I just wondering where that came from yes. as well. The middle name was not there. And then, in the degree certificate, it surfaced. <laughs> <laughs> Wanga is his biological father's name. Mm. For his instance, biological father's name. Yes, that is what I... I but that, I that's not his son name. No, that's not the, the son name. name is Diggy. Oh. The real son name, his grandfather's name is Diggy. Mm. For instance, my middle name is actually my father's name, and that is also something very common there. The issue of a middle name that is completely autonomous is mm. a fairly new development. Mm. Many persons have, whether it is male or female, the person's father functions as the person's middle name, yeah. while the grandfather's name functions as the son name. Son name. So my middle name is my biological father's name. Mm. My son name is my grandfather's father's name. name. As it were. Mm. So having gone to the university, I believe he felt like now including uh, having a middle name. Yes, there are many places where you go to and you say, ah, you have only first name and uh, son last name. name yeah. What about last the name? What yeah. about the middle name? Mm. And I believe that is what made him now include his father's name 
as a middle name. Okay. So that is how Wanga now went Came into it. Yes. Mm. All right. Um, now, yes, you want to add something? Yes. The only other thing to add is this Aramean, mm. which is uh, which I have told you filled in in the uh, forms to INEC. Yes. Nende people are matrilineal. Mm. And uh, it is known that all Ejo communities were originally matrilineal before they gradually became patrilineal. What, what do you mean matrilineal? Matrilineal, mm. meaning that uh, by you, you belong more to your mother's family okay. than to your father's family. Okay. It's fairly peculiar in Nigeria, not many tribes, because you are more likely to claim your father's heritage uh, than your mother's okay. heritage. But in my place, mm. you belong more to your mother's family. Fantastic. Rather than, for instance, as I am, if I am to be made a chief, yes. it is my mother's family that has precedence over me. They have a right to make me a chief. Oh, really? And the chieftaincy institution in Nembe is that you are made a chief to be the head of a lineage, mm. a common, a particular ancestor of who, who must have attained some uh, strides yeah. in wealth, in military warfare, and things like that. Okay. So, in about the late 80s or 90s, he was made a chief to head a lineage in his mother's family. Biologically, he was born, Degi is his grandfather. Yes. But he was now taken by his mother's people to be made to be made head of the Eremian lineage. lineage. And that is how Eremian now came, came into the picture. And so, like the, the burial program that I was to bring, yes. it is somebody, my cousin was uh, Chief Inabia Charles. Owaba Taylor. He biologically he was born by Owaba as his mm. father. But mm. we made him chief Taylor because his mother was a, a daughter of Taylor. Okay. And he had a greater right to be Taylor than I did. Okay. Although biologically I was born by Taylor is my grandfather. Okay. But being matrilineal, he had greater rights to it. Okay. So this Degi Iremia now had to be made the head of that Iremia. Uh, On his mother's his, side. His mother's side. Okay. And that is now by the tradition by the culture there once you have now been made a remain you now hyphenate your grandfather's your last name with that of the children's history you occupy mm -hmm. and that is a remain that is how diggy remain now came in otherwise a remain wouldn't feature in any of the certificates Certificate at all he had acquired his certificates and now was installed as Chief Taylor, unlike, for instance, in Benin, where there are chieftaincy stools created yes, in the palace, yes. where you become Esama of Benin. Yes. If it were, and of course, that is a kind of office that is created. Yes. But over there, it is by family lineage. Mm. So if it were here, for instance, the Esama of Benin would have been called Chief Gabriel Osawaru, the Benedian Esama. Mm. The Benedian Esama would have been like the Okay. So okay. that is the circumstance that now brought that one to be. For instance, if I am to be made the chief, uh, a particular um, lineage. Uh, of, of course, it is most likely to be from my mother's lineage. Okay. If under some circumstances, they will have to concede it to my father's mm. family. Mm. My father's family must come and obtain permission. Only if my mother's family grants them permission can they make me. So if my mother's family makes me the chief in their lineage, mm. I'm now likely to hyphenate my son in T line. Okay. With that, with that All right. Uh, this is just an exposition on um, what <laughs> transpired for uh, Digi Romeo. Yes. Now, uh, when we come back in a moment, we're going to look at how should this man's name be called? Are we going to have all of these six names or seven names together against the background, that, uh, background of what it represents in yes. the different, you know, aspect of the language or the linguistics that mm -hmm. we've uh, highlighted so yes. far. And then, um, Lion, L-Y-O-N, we know Olympic Lyonnais in France, which is yes. abbreviated to be Olympic Lyon, all right? And now, the same spelling is called Lion. So, I need to get this perspective from you when we return, but we'll take a short break. It's the TMI Monday. Don't go away. TMI, every opinion counts. Okay, thanks again for staying with us on the show. TMI right now on the very last lap of today's program. And uh, we are on the verge of uh, concluding our conversations on revisiting the Supreme Court judgment on Biosan election, particularly uh, as it led to the sacking of the governor and his deputy against the false documents which were allegedly presented by the deputy governor. Like, so I was asking uh, before the break, uh, how, how do we not construct the names of 
the uh, removed barrister deputy governor elect? How do we not construct them? Because at every point in time, there is a seeming justification for the inclusion of a new name, either from the uh, paternal side, maternal side, yeah. or from one activity or the other. There is a justification for it. Yeah. So, are we saying that? He has to bear all of these names, even when the man has gone ahead to swear and a feed of it to say the authentic, my authentic name yes. is this name. Isn't it? Isn't the man supposed to be the one that will tell us what what, what, what I mean, the component of his authentic names? Yes, I I, I think we, once again we are not lawyers, and the Supreme Court has given his judgment and mm. it remains. Yes, I think what 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 happens is that all of us will have to learn, particularly those of us from that community. Okay. In the first place, they are, what we have to take home is that like that chieftaincy title, that chieftaincy name mm. should not have come into his official records. Uh, absolutely. When he goes to the community, we will address him as chief he mm. But in his official dealings mm. and politics or in any other thing, he should have just gone by Biobarakma Digi or Biobarakma Wanga Digi, mm. which is the normal thing. Okay, yeah, Biobarakma Wanga, Wanga Digi. digi. His Degi is his, is his grandfather's name. Grandfather's name. Uh, one guy is his he's name. Father's is his father's he name. As and then uh, Biobara Kuma Biobara is his name. His personal name. Okay. That is what ought to be. Okay. Which is the like the pattern of names. I uh, the name I think. yes yes. Oh, in Ebio, Taylor. In Ebio, in Ebio is my father's name. Mm. Taylor is my grandfather's name. Okay. Even if in the future I happen to bear or uh, be installed as a chief bearing yes. from my maternal side. Yes. The advice is that. When don't I don't include it. Yeah. I, don't, I shouldn't include it in my official dealings. Mm. I should be addressed as yeah. so 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 Mr. So so Taylor Professor So Taylor. When I am in the community, they will address me as Chief Jeremiah, as it were. That I think is the advice. And somebody like Timipure Silva, the Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum, yes. is smart about it because he also has a chieftaincy title <laughs> from that <laughs> But you find out that he does not that chieftaincy title he, yes. does not chief, reflect in his he documents. Bears chief Timipure Silva by bearing chief, he ought to have added yes the title silver sun okay but probably he is smarter and that sum is not featuring at all because he knows he just leave it a chief there yes, yes. which represents uh, the other name that yeah. probably would have been added yeah but they should they should have called for mm. the, the other name mm. the sum that is uh which is but, but looking at it so prof, 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 looking at it holistically yes. uh, this problem is not really restricted to what played out with the biasa deputy governor elect it looks like it's a common problem in the sense that um when you find people have a particular name mm. uh someone raised this issue some time ago yes. uh maybe the parents of this child they were alive somewhere along the line they passed mm. and then the child is given to an uncle to stay with yes. and the process of time the uncle wants to register him or her for one exam and then somehow there is a mix up in exactly. names exactly. yeah so th this is this is common exactly. what's your advice in dealing with this my, my my advice is that as much as possible this registration for examination by proxy should be discouraged okay even if a child is in a rural area the either the parent direct parent himself or the child himself should be made to be present and write the name as he or she wants it to appear mm. So that this particular question of saying, ah, it should have been like this, or yes. it shouldn't have been, yes. shouldn't arise. Yes. And of course, in the unlikely event that it arises, all effort must be made to reach the institution itself to correct that name, mm. rather than attempt to use affidavits to swear, because as we've learned from this case, affidavits may not suffice. Absolutely, exactly. absolutely. Okay, now, uh, the other thing is just, I wanted to get your thoughts on is, um, L-Y-O-N is spelled, is pronounced... Leon, Leon in France, yes. but in Biasa State it's pronounced Lion. I don't get it. Yes, I, I, I think it's one of the challenges we have with borrowed name, names. When a name is borrowed from some other culture, there is an attempt either to simplify or to domesticate the name. And being that it is borrowed from uh, the Western culture, mm. it is not a Bielsa name. It's not an indigenous Bielsa name. Okay. It is not that, oh, this is an Ejo name, but it nearly corresponds yes. with uh, the name in France. Yes. I believe that it's essentially a name that is borrowed. Of course, in Bielsa and Rivers, this idea of bearing foreign names is mm. very common. Mm -hmm. Graham Douglas, yeah. uh, White, yeah. Green, and all that. Yeah. So I believe essentially that the name is Leon that is borrowed. Okay. Yeah, that is taken by his father or his grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the locality, uh, there is that attempt to say that, well, it sounds like Lion. So, so, so the correct pronunciation of that name should be David Leon. 
Uh, am I in a position to make a pronouncement? No, because in a sense, because you believe, have given us an idea. Yes, yeah. I believe it is supposed to be Leon. Yes. In where it came from. Yes. But whether the people have a right to domesticate it, <laughs> I have not listened to David. The governorship, the, uh, the governorship elect yes, removed. Yeah, removed, yeah. Removed. yeah. I have not heard him pronounce his name by himself. Oh, you've not I heard know, him. You know, I've not heard him. Okay. I wonder how he himself would have pronounced it. Okay. Whether, of course, if he pronounces it as Leon, then we will take it that the, that is how he wants us to pronounce mm. it. But suppose he pronounces it as Lion. Mm. Are we in the position to correct him to say what you are calling the name you are calling yourself uh, Lion? You are not supposed to call yourself that. You should call yourself <laughs> Leon. I, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, 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 I'm just trying to take a cue from your name. Yes. Um, uh, Dewey T. Lion. T. Lion. Yes. T. Lion. Yes. Now, T. Lion, if you, if you look at, if you remove T, you have Lion, which is L-A-N-Y-O. Maybe that's, that's the input. That's, this, this is how uh, the Lion's name ought to be uh, spelt. I don't know if you, if you get yeah, my just take. just like a Remy Ayo. Yes. Ending in that, that kind of name. In the University of Benin, I make a joke uh, often that if you want to remember my name, remember the tail of a lion. And so many people call me tail of a lion and things like that. So that, that kind of something, lion, of course, this one is an indigenous name. Lion yes, yes. will reach you, will affect you. Okay. That is the meaning of lion. Okay. Tail lion, okay. what will affect you. Okay. Uh, that is the meaning of situation. Okay. So uh, I believe that in this particular case, much as it is a borrowed name, and we know that in where it came from, it mm. we pronounce Leon. Mm. When it has come here, the people have a right to say, well, even if it was pronounced Leon there, I want to be seen as a lion, so mm. they had better call me Lion. lion. I, I think it is possible. Okay. But I think the ultimate person to tell us how he wants it to be pronounced is uh, the... Uh, the governor that never was or, or <laughs> never may be himself if he pronounces it if he pronounces it as leon then we'll take it as leon mm. if he pronounces it as lion then mm. we'll take it that way but i think the more popular in by outside once again the two pronunciations are, are being uh, adopted are adopted yeah, okay. the two of them okay uh, and incidentally because he has not been in politics long enough yeah people have not himself people not many persons have heard him pronounce it himself yeah. so i think we'll have to wait uh, he's still a young man possibly still has some pol political career ahead and so when he comes into office yeah. and people call his name or he himself pronounces his name yes. then that is where we'll take it so right. we are not in a position to legislate on it here absolutely Thank well you. it's been very fruitful and uh, insightful sharing some thoughts with uh, professor diri Eremeo. Uh, uh, right. pro professor diri tay lion from uh, <laughs> university of benia professor of English and uh, with so much vastness in linguistics, giving us all the detailed analysis from the first name to the second to the third to the fourth name of uh, the deputy governor elect by our state that was uh, eventually removed by the Supreme Court. But the take home from our conversation is that we need to be consistent in our names. Uh, and I know that a lot of people have that challenge. Either when you were uh, on the verge of living in secondary school or graduating, going for NYC, you have these discrepancies. And I think that it's something we have to cultivate a culture of uh, standardizing and uh, ensure that uh, at every stage in time, our documentation is consistent. That's the only way you can avoid a, a scenario uh, that played out in Biosa. I mean, just to think about all the effort put into that election, just because of inconsistencies in the names, and uh, those guys never see the light of the day. I mean, the, the painful part of it is that the inauguration was to happen exactly. a day before. I mean, yeah. then a day before this came. Yeah, the well, governor was actually doing rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> and they have pictures of him doing rehearsal. Few hours, uh, everything was set. And um, it's, it's very unfortunate that that uh, happened. And uh, well, it's, it's, it's something of this. It has brought a little bit of a question mark in even the political fortunes of this particular uh, of this country as it were. Mm. Um, when the people had voted somebody in and the, the court has come to say much as this is the man you wanted yeah. but for some technical reasons unfortunately you cannot have him yeah. because of this yes. some other person. So yes. whether we still have democracy mm. or I, I play or under that circumstance yeah, yeah, government, yeah, government of the people by the by people and for the people, people. now the people have made an election yes. they made a choice yes. and then they can't have the person yeah, they voted yeah, they, for 
the, the court has said, no, you can't have the one you want mm. for this sole reason. It is also a big lesson for the political parties Absolutely. to do their own work very well Absolutely. and present only candidates either in terms of their integrity or some technical mm. things. So that, uh, yeah, I also heard there was a similar uh, issue playing out with the even the PDP deputy governor elect. Yes, yes. yes, yes. But that didn't subsist. It didn't, it didn't uh, stand the test of time. Well, I, once again, I am not fully into those. Um, um, in three cases, yes. uh, some persons still suggest that there is still a case in court about um, uh, discrepancies in the names as well. In his, uh, certificates, okay. uh, NYC and all that. Yes. But whether that can still, even if there is, can anything happen now that he has immunity? <laughs> A different, a different dimension has that come into play. Yeah, 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 yeah because yeah. that's true. He has been sworn in. Yes. He has immunity. Yes. Uh, so whether anything can happen, <laughs> the, the politicians and the lawyers may have to. All right. Um, Thank you very much, uh, Professor. We are even told that there is still another case in court. Yes. In PGP, another aspirant. Yes. Yes. Uh, so yes. things like that. Yes. I, I also saw uh, some uh, proposals for. Um, for uh, you know where, where we can have all of these you know pre-election matters tending to override you know by the time it gets to a court of competent jurisdiction yes. it just changes the whole narrative exactly. changes the status quo yes. and changes everything but yes. we're hoping that uh, we got ahead I think is already proposing about uh, 31 or 34 amendments in the electoral act yes. so we hope when all of that comes into fruition uh, there will be a drastic reduction in all of these things that plays out mm -hmm. and tends to undermine the good intention of the people out there. Well, Prof, thank you so much for coming thank on you. the program. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Okay, uh, it's TMI Monday, and this is where we draw that famous cotton on the show. We hope you had a great time with all the thoughts that came forth today. Big thanks to all our panelists. Big thanks to our crew behind the stage. And big thanks to you for watching. My name is Sonny Duke Okosun. Thanking you for staying with us. Have a great week ahead. Bye for now.